Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bill Fleming, together with Jackie Stewart and Chris Economaki, speaking to you live from the Atlanta Speedway. The Atlanta 500 is in progress. We're reporting it live this afternoon, and we have some 85 laps to go. A little bit over 125 miles, and those are the standings as we have David Pearson, who has fought his way back. After being a lap down, he has the lead right now. Live from the Atlanta International Raceway in Atlanta, Georgia, ABC's Championship Auto Racing presents the Atlanta 500 Stock Car Race. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear Tires and Goodyear Service for more good years in your car. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Well, the story this afternoon is that some of the real hotshots of Grand National NASCAR racing are not in the race right now. Here is one of them. Buddy Baker just moments ago blew an engine and did a miraculous job of keeping his car under control as he was sliding in his own goo. As he dropped down over the yellow caution rail, he kept the car under control as it started to slide and slip. The yellow caution light came out, and even though he had a bit of a thrill down there, there was nothing uh, as far as a mishap is concerned with other cars on the race course, but the car and Buddy have retired from the race. So he loses the opportunity of winning two Atlanta races in a row. He won the Dixie 500 here back in the latter part of the fall. Let's go down to Chris Economaki now, who is with Buddy Baker. Moments ago, Bill, this trail of water and oil was left by Buddy Baker as he left the race. He was the fourth contender to drop out, the others being Richard Petty, Dave Marcus, and Bobby Allison. All in all, a dozen cars have left this 36 car race, including four or half of the eight rookies in the field. Back to you, Bill. Okay, and if you could get uh, Buddy, uh, Chris, we'd appreciate hearing from him just exactly what happened because he was running very hot. He was leading the race, and then lost out. And the leader right now is David Pearson. Now, he has an interesting story. Back very early in the race this afternoon, David came in, made a pit stop under a yellow, went back out, ran two laps, and all of a sudden, while the green was out, he was back in the pits again, changing rubber on the right side. That put him one lap down, and he's been fighting his way back all afternoon. And so let's get a report now from our racing expert, three-time world driving champion, Jackie Stewart. Well, I think, Bill, one of the exciting things has been that the sort of Magnificent Seven, as everyone called them around here, the stock car specialists, the people like Richard Petty, David Pearson, Cale Yarbrough, Dave Marcus nowadays, Buddy Baker and Bobby Allison were up there at the beginning of the race. They were the, pets, the pace setters, as usual, in these NASCAR events. Unfortunately, uh, attrition's had its uh, part to play today, and, of course, many of the stars are still out there. But there you see them, still up there. The man who, of course, is the silver fox in car number 21, the red and white car you can see just behind the pace car there, is, of course, David Pearson. And Benny Pass as well, he's a superstar now. He came from winning the 500 Daytona in 1975, and he's now in second place. A man who you can always expect now to be up in the front part. All right, the way they stand right now with uh, another lap or so under the yellow because of the blown engine by Buddy Baker. David Pearson still in the lead and will be back in a moment. The Atlanta International Raceway is a rather unusual race course. It is 1.522 miles around, and that's the reason we have a rather unusual amount of laps for 500 miles. It's 328 times around. Right now, they are on lap 246, and we will have a green on 247. So as you can see, we still have about 80 laps to go. We have a crowd of better than 50,000 on hand here today, and I should mention this, the weather has played an important role in the race from this standpoint. We had a very strong thunderstorm last night. Over an inch of rain was dumped on this track, and it made the track very, very clean. Now, to some, well, they might say that's fine, but to race drivers, it merely means that the track is much more abrasive, and Jackie, that has been borne out by the fact that they have used a lot of tires here today. Yes, you know, tire wear is a very important part, but tire temperatures are even more important. And when a track is very clean, like you're describing them, Bill, what happens is that the car gets roughed up against the uh, the tarmac, the tire gets scrubbed, and of course the temperature of the tires go right up. Up to around 300 degrees of temperature, in fact, goes onto those tires. They run best around perhaps 260 uh, degrees, and of course when that happens, when you go over that figure, well, you're in trouble. I believe we're just about ready for the green flag here, Bill. The pace car's coming off. 
All right, and we're going to get the green flag as David Pearson, who won the Daytona in February. You should remember the big 500 race with uh, Richard Petty when he limped across the start-finish line to take the checkered flag. is in the lead right now, and Benny Parsons, who, run, who won the final IROC race this year, is in second place. And incidentally, Benny Parsons has had a rough 24 hours. He has been very, very busy. Not only is he running here for 500 miles or nearly four hours, but he ran 12 hours at Sebring. Incidentally, that car that you saw coming into your picture right now, the 11 car is driven by Cale Yarborough. Now, Cale dropped four or five laps a little bit earlier because of a very small part in the distributor. Yeah, great pity for him because he was one of the pace setters earlier on. Cale Yarborough, big favorite with a crowd down here at Atlanta. He's now in second position on the track, but of course he's further back at the racetrack. He's in fourth position right. in the results right now, but he's a man who can still finish well up. In the lead right now, is uh, David Pearson, and we were talking about the piece that broke on Cale Yarborough's car. So let's go down and uh, check in with Chris Akatamaki and get the report. Well, a dollar and a half item, a distributor rotor on the car that Cale Yarborough was driving, which has dominated this race, has put him three laps behind. This little part here gave way, fired the wrong spark plug. A dollar and 50 cent item is costing the team thousands and thousands of dollars. Back to you, Bill. All right, fine, uh, Chris, and that uh, mishap occurred when Cale was really running hot here this afternoon, and it did drop him uh, five laps down. He has made two of those up, and he is three down to the leaders, and if he can get around David Pearson right now, he would only be two lap back, two laps back. Incidentally, this afternoon, we have had 46 laps so far under the yellow caution. We have had nothing of a serious nature. We've had a couple of blown engines, uh, one drive shaft let loose. We've had some oil on the track, but nothing particularly serious. We're very happy about that, but we must remind you that when the, hour, the last hour of the Atlanta 500 comes into view, because it's such a tiring track to drive, many, many things can happen. Remember a year ago, Jackie? That's right. We on the, uh, with only seven laps to go a year ago, Lenny Pond had a problem, uh, blew an engine, and of course the whole field closed right up. Richard Petty at that time had a very healthy lead on Buddy Baker, and of course because of that it closed right up. And on the very last lap, they threw the green flag. And in fact, uh, Buddy Baker was only beaten out to first position by Richard Petty with only a few feet. So David Pearson in the lead. Benny Parsons is in second place. In third place is Lenny Pond. He is a lap down. Two laps down is Cale Yarbrough. We'll be back in just a moment. On the 196th lap today, Richard Petty went out of the race, car number 43. However, yet this week has been a rather interesting week for Richard Petty because one of his old friends, Jackie Stewart, paid him a visit in the pits and suggested that perhaps he would like to jump in that car. Well, it's been, what, two and a half years that uh, Jackie has been in retirement. Richard kind of quizzically looked at him and said, well, I guess it's all right if you'll keep it in one good piece. So let's join him. I think you'll get a kick out of this. You know, Rich, it's a funny thing. I've always fancied myself as a stock car driver. Oh, I've never, <laughs> never had the opportunity. It's a terrible thing to ask, but do you think there might be a chance that I could try your car? Well, as long as I can talk to you on the radio and tell you how to do it, then we might be able to work out something. Oh, that would be a big help. Can I ask for your help at the, at the wrong moment, if it ever comes? No, you, it, if you're in trouble, that's up to you. You'll have to get out of it. <laughs> okay, let's have a go. Uh -huh. How do I get in? I mean, Just it... throw a foot up in there and jump in. It's not the same as a Formula One car. It really isn't, no. I mean, the You'll indignity, find that out right quick. The indignity of having to climb no, into the car here. Know. You might hold on to this helmet I'll for me. I'll take care of that. Ah! Now, wait a minute. The seat's different, Richard. That's the other thing. Well, it'll be all right. I'm you get used to it. I'm sitting upright. I'm normally used to lying down in these cars. You don't want to lay down in one of these big things. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever been in a stock car. It's the first time that I've ever been in a high bank oval. It's the first time that I've ever... Missing one. Oh. I'm missing, you. I'm missing uh. a lot of things in here right now. <laughs> I, uh... I don't know how I'm going to handle all this, Richard. I'm going to need a great deal of help on the radio. Well, I must... well, I'm going to try to stay with you. I'm gonna... You bet I'm going to sit up here on the wall and watch you. Well, I'll bet you are, too. I got okay. my good race car. Well, I hope... Well, there I am. Look at the driving position. I can just about reach the pedals of Richard Petty's car. He's a long-legged man, but he certainly sits close to the steering wheel. Okay, I'll put my head on. Richard Petty's very own crash helmet. I've got my microphone in here. I'll get buckled up. 
I'm used to my own crash over, but on this occasion, I'll be happy to drive with yours, Richard. Okay. See if I can hit it on here. And see it. Are you reading me now? Who in the bank? Can you pick me up? Ten for you. Coming in good. Bumpy right through that particular section where you run. Uh, you run a, a little bit lower through there. It's not quite as rough. Come on, come on down a little bit lower right there. You just come right on a little bit lower. And uh, attaboy, there you go. Hey, you're just right. All right, now you drift on back out against the wall from there. Okay, you're right, you're right in there. Now, you, now come on back down toward the inside of the track. That boy, come right on down to the, to the white line on the bottom, and then you're right. Yeah, now you come through that bump, and it's not quite as rough that way. All right, now you're getting it. Yeah, that's the way it's done. <laughs> I'm too low on the racetrack, and I certainly feel the closeness of the wall, even though I'm a long way away from it. Well, you'll feel, you'll feel real close because it's a big car and everything. Once you run a little bit, you get used to it, and you don't pay that much attention to it then. Okay, I'm going to try and stay out a little bit next time. I'm trying to stay higher on the racetrack. Okay, just don't get to going too fast now. This is the first time out there. I got a race to run with this car too. Now you got to remember that. Well, that wall certainly seems different. I don't feel as if I can get close to it as I did the wall. Well, that wall seems to be different. You're running plenty close enough right now. That's okay. You get used to the car, the uh, way it feels and stuff in a minute. The steering won't be quite as heavy the faster you run. Now you got that corner down pretty good now. You need to run a little bit lower going in this other corner up here. That now you're going real through that and real good. Okay, just bring it on in this time. Look like you that's plenty enough, I think, for the first time out. You're looking good. Just bring it on in. Okay, Richard, coming in. You gotta watch them brakes, they don't stop too good. Okay, I think I was too hard in the brakes there. I came in there, and suddenly it's different. Yeah, you'll find out them brakes ain't quite as good as they are on them former cars. I didn't speak to you nearly enough out there. <laughs> Get through that corner good. That's got the groove. Well, I don't know. I think I was probably, I felt as if I was going too low no, all the uh, way through it. Uh -uh. I hit a bump once yeah. through there. The car if you run too... low enough, you go under that bump. Really? Well, yeah. I hit it on the second last time around there and it didn't feel so good. The car's very, <laughs> the car's very soft. Huh? Yeah. It, 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 really, it really is soft. Right. We're very, very soft. Well. It was a nice experience, Richard. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought it all back in one piece. Well, thanks very much. It's, uh, okay, Jack. It's not everyone who wants to give you the race card just before a grand national event. Well, you notice I stayed right with you. You were there, Richard. <laughs> okay. And I needed you. <laughs> <laughs>
Bill Fleming along with Jackie Stewart and Chris Economaki back live from the Atlanta 500. We have just seen Jackie Stewart out on the race course. And Jackie, you gave everybody a thrill. As we see now, Benny Parsons take the lead from David Pearson. So Benny Parsons from Ellaby, North Carolina, by way of Detroit, has the lead. And it looks by the way Pearson is dropping so far back that maybe David is experiencing some difficulty with his car. All of a sudden, Parsons in that car, number 72, the Chevy, just blew the Mercury right off. And it may very well be that Pearson has a bit of a problem. He either has a bit of a problem or he just got it a little bit sideways in one of these corners up there. Earlier on in the day, I've been watching him having handling troubles, but he's dropped a long way back now. Benny Parsons has taken, oh, a good 150, 200 yards off of him, really, and only half the racetrack. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, David Pearson uh, comes into the pits this time or keeps going. It could be that he's just unsettled. He's giving himself a bit of a, a break from Benny Parsons, but he's, he's given him an awful big break. This is a very bumpy racetrack, as you saw there when I was out uh, in Richard Petty's car. How fast car. were you going? Well, I was, I was doing, I was averaging nearly 140 mile an hour around there. I was obviously not going to break any lap records. These boys just now are averaging around 150 mile an hour, but it's, uh, it's something different to do. <laughs> Okay, now apparently uh, Chris Economaki has been getting some information in the pits on David Pearson. Uh, Chris, bring us up to date. Well, the Wood Brothers right here are concerned about David letting Benny Parsons by. In spite of the race, for this kind of friction, there may be some trouble. Cale Yarbrough, on the other hand, who was maybe five laps behind after that uh, distributor repair, has made up all but two of them. And he has the fastest car on the track, a couple of yellow flags, and Cale Yarbrough could be back in contention once again. Back to you, Bill. Okay, here's the way things stand right now. They are on lap 265, and we have Benny Parsons in the lead. David Pearson is right behind him. Then we have Lenny Pond and Cale Yarbrough, and that could be quite a battle for third place. Yarbrough, as Chris mentioned, made up quite a bit of time because of that uh, hit stop due to the faulty distributor, and Darrell Waltrip is fifth. But right now, the man, it seems to be, who is running as fast as anybody is uh, Benny Parsons, although we did put a watch on Cale Yarborough just a moment ago, and Cale was clicking it off at about 153 miles an hour. Well, that Benny Parsons certainly took a big advantage. Well, there was a little bit of speculation about Benny Parsons having done the 12 hours of Sebring uh, over the last 24 hours there. Could Benny uh, be a little tired after that event? I was speaking to his crew chief yesterday, and he was concerned because uh, Benny has shown some fatigue in some of these races. It'll be interesting to see if he can carry this out. It's a cool day. It's not too warm. There's a good reason for him to be fresher than he would perhaps be if it were a more humid day. And Benny Parsons, you know, has developed as a driver. He really has come along since he got the confidence of winning that Daytona 500 in 1975. He got into the ABC series of auto racing with the International Race of Champions, and the man himself has come right up as a driver. And here's a good look at uh, Benny Parsons, the former taxi driver in Detroit, who really did come into his own in 1974 when he won the very prestigious Daytona 500. And uh, as mentioned, he has done ex 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 in 75. He's done exceedingly well on the courses. He right now is in fourth place in the money list with $46,805. He's been out on the course five times, five starts. He's been in the top five four of those times and five times he's been in the top ten. We've been noticing Darrell Waltrip's car smoking, number 88. Yeah, that's something I think we've got to worry about. Darrell Waltrip in a green and white car, number 88, has been smoking. We're seeing it uh, out on the racetrack here and sitting in sixth position is Richard Brooks sitting having a look at that Darrell Waltrip car and if it really smokes a lot more, he could be in trouble. Lap 271, 57 to go and in the lead is Benny Parsons. Before things got underway, we had an opportunity to hear some comments of Benny Parsons. So as we look at car number 72 out on the course right now, let's listen to his comments. Benny, a long day at Sebring in a, in a road racing car and a flight up to Atlanta. Are you ready for 500 miles? Well, I think so, Chris. Uh, you know, we got in late, early enough last night that I got a full night's rest and feel pretty good today. Eight yellow bumpers, Benny. Eight rookies in the field of 36. What does that mean to a guy who wasn't too long ago a rookie, but now is a superstar? Well, you know, uh, nationally we will have a certain amount of problems with the, the rookies because this is, the, this is their first time in Atlanta, and it's a tough racetrack to get around, not only for a rookie, but for uh, someone that's been doing it for a long time. 
So they'll be in the way a little bit, but we just have to look at that yellow bumper and say, well, you know, I better be kind of careful because this guy might, you know, drift up the racetrack in front of me or he might cut down in front of me. We just have to look at the bumpers and take into consideration. Where would you pass a rookie uh, where you might not pass somebody else? Very carefully. <laughs> just about, well, you can pass them wherever you run across them, uh, depending upon the speed they're running. But uh, if they're running very good and as quick as you are, you try to do it down the straightaway. A couple Thanks of the lot, rookies, Jimmy race. Lee Caps and Terry Bivens, have spun out here this afternoon, but we still have four on the race course. And right now, with 55 laps to go, it is Benny Parsons in the lead, David Parsons right behind him, David Pierce is behind him, and then we have Lenny Pond, Cale Yarborough, and Darrell Walter. A reminder here about the next three NASCAR races. April 4th, the Gwynn Staley 400 at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. The Rebel 500 from Darlington. That'll be on April the 11th, which ABC will televise live. And on April the 25th, the Virginia 500 at Martinsville, Virginia. That also will be run. And right now we're taking a look at a fellow who is really running hot this afternoon, Benny Parsons. Benny Parsons in the lead, 76 miles to go, 50 laps, and he has the lead over David Pearson. I would say he has about 75 to 80 yard lead over Pearson right now. Lenny Pond is uh, in third place. There's a, a good look at car number 21, the Purolator Mercury, driven by David Pearson. And he is going for his third win of the Grand National NASCAR season. He won the Western 500, the Daytona 500, the only man who has won two races so far this year. As you know, Dave Marcus won one, the Cale Yarborough won one, and Richard Petty won one. And Benny Parsons still looking for the first victory of the season. This is what his career is so far, and as I mentioned, $48,000 of that has come so far this year with uh, being in the top five four times. So that's the way things stand right now as we have had, uh, in case you joined us late, some of the big names go out of the race. Richard Petty is out, Bobby Allison is out, and uh, we also had uh, Cale Yarborough drop out for a while. Uh, five laps he lost, but is back in the race. Dave Marcus is out of the race. Chris Economaki talked to David Pearson a little bit earlier. As you know, David and Richard were involved in that bang-up, slam-bang finish at the Daytona 500. Here's what David had to say about this race. <laughs> David, the, uh, the smaller carburetor, does it make any difference in how you drive the car here at Atlanta? Well, uh, yes, Chris. Of course, uh, you have to drive the car a little bit harder, and, uh, of course, the speed-wise, we're running about the same. But uh, I really think that the reason that we run as fast as we did because uh, we come in here on the first day and qualified the first day because the track was green, and you always run fast the first day here. What about where you are on the track? Are you in the same place you were a year ago when you want to go fast? Well, I think this time when I qualified, I was maybe a little bit lower on the racetrack than what I was before because, uh, like I say, we had to run harder through the corners, and uh, we were slower up straight away. So I feel like that uh, we could handle a little bit better now than we was then. We got a little bit better tires, so uh, that's one reason. That, and the weather was cool, too, so that's one reason we were running as good as we was last year. By pushing the engine harder, does that mean that you're uh, taking a chance on blowing it more than you might the old way? Oh, well, I hope not. Uh, of course, we was on it more, and I think uh, even now during the race, we will be on the engine more so than it was before because uh, before we was backing off quite a bit through the corners. And uh, it all depends on how hard the other guys run. Now, if they run real hard, naturally we're going to have to run hard and uh, stand on a little bit harder too. But uh, we feel like the way we are geared and everything that we will be in good shape. Okay, good luck. Now, you heard David Pearson mention the smaller carburetor inlet. Now, we would, don't want to get too technical on it, but there was a new rule in NASCAR that came into effect just this past week, and this is the first race under which the cars are running under a, uh, a little more restriction. Yes, well, the carburetor, in fact, is a new carburetor. It's a smaller carburetor altogether. What they had was a big barrel carburetor, which they put a restrictor into, therefore restricting the flow of the air and the fuel into the combustion chamber. Now what they've done is they've allowed a new carburetor, a smaller carburetor, to be specially manufactured for these engines. Now, when anything is specially manufactured for racing, Bill, it's always going to be better than an old piece of iron that's modified. And, of course, here you've got a racing carburetor running in that car right now which is a more efficient carburetor even though it's supposedly giving less fuel and air to the engine but it is more efficient in doing so well i'll tell you this the the whole idea of course is to keep this engine attrition down and i think that's been evidenced here today we have not had a great many blown engines we still have a lot of course uh, cars on the race course we've only lost 13 cars a couple by spins so if it has accomplished that it has certainly saved a lot of hardware and machinery
And not only does that, but I think it makes for closer motor racing. And this is what NASCAR's famous for the world over. You know, I see motor races in every corner of the world almost every weekend. But this is the best kind of motor racing I see anywhere in the world. It's the closest, it's the most evenly matched. You see more lead changes. And this is what the public come to see right now, because there are these two great men really getting tied up to each other. Okay, we had eight rookies who started here today. Of course, this is a great proving ground for them, a very tough track to drive. Right now, as far as the race is concerned, we are uh, into the 286th lap. We have 42 laps to go, and so there's still a lot of racing and one very important pit stop to come. But right now, let's talk about those rookies, and let's join Chris Akonimaki with one of them. The face of a rookie, 32-year-old Tubby Bivens of Shawnee Mission, Kansas. One of eight in the race, but out of the race, into the wall, sorry, now you didn't do that, did you? No, uh, going into turn three and the motor locked up on me and uh, got the car sideways. It was pretty lucky not to get in the wall any harder. We didn't uh, didn't hurt the car and the motor sure is gone. What's a rookie thinking about in his first race at the Atlanta International Raceway? Well, I had a bad weekend in Bristol last weekend and lost the motor didn't finish. And well, I just wanted to finish today. I needed the points. I think we're still in lead in the points, but uh, I wanted to finish the race today and get a good finish, but it didn't work out that way. The rookies are all shooting for a $10,000 prize at the end of the year, and Terry is one of those in contention. Back to you, Bill. All right, and uh, let's uh, bring our viewers up to date on the fact that the leaders pitted on the 232nd lap. We are on 288. Now they're running very, very close, and they'll have to make one more pit stop. We'll be back in just a moment. We have 40 laps to go, and it is still Benny Parsons being chased by David Pearson. Incidentally, ABC's Wide World of Sports is coming up next. A uh, wonderful show this afternoon, the Vienna Ice Review from Lausanne, Switzerland. The 50th anniversary of the Golden Globes Finals from Madison Square Garden in New York. And for those of you who are thrilled with the performance of Dorothy Hamill in the Olympic Games, you'll see her homecoming from Riverside, Connecticut. All coming up today, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific Time on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We have completed 291 laps, 37 laps to go, 56 miles. And now David Pearson is moved up on Benny Parsons. Let's get a further report from the pit area at Chris Kalamaki. It's only recently that David Pearson started using a radio on his car, and now he is telling the pit what the problem is, and it's a vibration. Somewhere in either the engine, transmission, or driveline. He cannot pinpoint it, so they don't know where to go to fix it. So he's staying out there, and they're scratching their heads as to what to do, because without the vibration, he could be the winner. Back to you, Bill. Okay, well, I don't, you know, talk about vibrations. Uh, you know, he had a few uh, vibrations in Daytona this year, too, of a, of a rather violent nature, Jackie. He certainly had. David Pearson knew about that, and that was all in turn four on the very Watch last it. lap. And Watch there it. he goes. He's making a move. He's making a move on Benny. Look, there's a he's spin down in the fourth turn. There's a car down uh, number 41, I believe it is. Brad Edcox has spun. The yellow is out just at the moment that David Pearson was making a move. Yeah, well, that couldn't have helped them, but on the other hand, it's no great penalty at this time because they're both on the same lap, so therefore the question of whether this is going to take any time to clear it away, this... Okay, Grant Adcox uh, in car number 41 in the uh, Chevrolet started to spin, and he went into that long slide. Fortunately, the other cars missed him, and David Pearson has taken the lead over Benny Parsons. Well, at Daytona this year, we certainly uh, haven't seen a race like that ever. It's the most talked about automobile race, perhaps, in the last 25 years. With two laps to go, Jackie and I were there along with Chris Akinamaki, and here was the situation. There you see the 1976 Daytona 500 with Pearson and Pettit. Right now, there they are, two men, and they've completed 197 laps. Okay, when they come by here, they will be on the 199th lap. 198 completed. So the next time around, we will have the checkered, I mean, not the checkered, the white flag before the checkered. One lap to go. And it's as if a motor race was just starting all over again. The adrenaline's pumping right inside those motor cars. The driver is as excited now as he was before they asked, gentlemen, start your engine. Right now, both of them are thinking the same thing. Now, what does he choose to do? Does Richard Petty choose to leap going down the back straight on that last important lap? Or does he fall back and let David Pearson do it? Does he feel confident that that car 
and that dodge will take him all the way through turn three and four without being questioned by Pearson on the draft up to the dog leg finish. That's where confidence comes in. We'll just have to wait and see. Johnny Bruner Sr. Uh, has always told the drivers, white flag is out, one lap to go. Keep your eye on the rear vision mirror. He said it's extremely important. I don't believe that you have to tell Richard Petty to keep his eyes in the rear vision mirror. I reckon he's throwing it out the window right now. I don't think he's even interested. There they go, and they're coming in. Everybody is standing stretch. here at the Daytona International Speedway. Look at David Pearson. He has moved closer. Can he do it? He's going to pull out now. He's going to try for the track. I don't know. He's down on the inside. He's he even. He's got the lead, but there's a car ahead of him. There's a slower car ahead of him. And Richard Petty and Pearson go high. Pearson now has the lead. Petty tries and to go Petty. back down on the inside as they come out of the fourth turn. They only have about 750 yards to go. Oh! It's a straightaway. They did hit. Oh. Petty smashes into the wall. Will he come across the start finish line? He's going to win the race. He's going to win it spinning as he, I believe, will take the checkered flag. No, he did not make it. He, he is less than 100 yards from it. Here comes Pearson. Pearson is going to try to make it across the finish line. Teddy has his car going. Pearson's going to win it. Oh, gosh, he's a He wins the race. Well, have you ever seen anything quite like that? David Pearson was the winner of the 1976 Daytona 500 with a car all mashed up in front. Right now, he is leading the Atlanta 500. He has the lead over Benny Parsons at this point in the race. We have a green out now as the cars flash by. Now Benny Parsons is in the lead. Benny Parsons has the lead over David Pearson. Parsons in 72. Pearson in 71, and right alongside them is Cale Yarborough. Cale Yarborough is two laps down to them right now. If he can get around the leaders, he would be only one down. He is currently in third place, and Cale has been running 153.7, and there he goes. If he can get by now, he will have one lap to make up. What a fantastic performance by Cale Yarborough all day long here. He's certainly been the fastest car on this racetrack all the time. The car handles better than any of the others. He can always choose where he runs in this racetrack. One minute, he's low like he is right now. The next minute, he's right up by the guardrail. This car must be handling like a dream. All right, Cale Yarborough, that's the yellow car. Number 11 is now in third place. In first place, right behind him, is David Pearson. And in second place, behind him, is Benny Parsons in the Kings Row Chevrolet. So we've got Cale in a Chevy. We've got a Mercury behind him, driven by David Pearson, and another Chevy behind him. And we have the green light come on at 296. We have 32 laps to go. And right now, it could be anybody's race because there will not be any more pit stops this afternoon unless somebody has a problem. We'll be back in just a moment. David Pearson in car number 21, the second leading money winner on the circuit of the Grand National this year, has the lead over Benny Parsons. The car right in front there, however, is driven by Cale Yarbrough. Now, the last time we checked on Cale, he was doing 153.7, and the leaders, Pearson and Parsons, were doing 151. So, Cale was running about two mile an hour faster on the course. Now, whether he can make up that lap, <laughs> that's another question. Well, the only way he can do it really is to have some breaks, not only with traffic, but also with yellow with yellow lights. He certainly wouldn't make it up on the, on the racetrack by going fast, but it's certainly fair to say that he's the man who's been the hottest man all day long. And in fact, to come up and take third position as he has done after having been almost five laps down on everyone else says a great deal for this man. What a hard driver he is. All right, now also behind them are Lenny Pond in car number 54, who is two laps down. And that is the uh, blue car you see on your screen right there. And there is number 88, Daryl Waltrip. Now, Waltrip's car has been smoking and uh, has been obviously losing a little bit of power. But every time Pond comes up there, Waltrip fights him off, even though Pond is ahead of uh, Waltrip at this point on the race course. Uh, Waltrip does not want to be lapped again. You can see the smoke puffing out of there, and it's been doing it for 10 laps. Yeah, oh, it's been doing it quite a long time. In fact, it could be coming out the exhaust pipe. If that were the case, you can see the car smoking right now. That's the green and white car on the top end, left-hand side of your picture. What it could be, of course, it could be using up oil. It could be coming out the exhaust. If that's the case, it's using up oil. In this particular kind of motor racing, you can come in and top up with oil, but that certainly would lose his chance, but it could be that. All right, Cale Yarborough at car number 11. 
A car that uh, has been the fastest car out here so far today, but because of a distributor problem, lost five laps at a critical point in the race. This Holly Farm Chevrolet, prepared by Junior Johnson, is currently in third place, and he is a lap down to the leaders. Before things got underway, Cale Yarborough had a few observations about this race course. He's won this race four times more than anybody else. 23 Chevrolets in the field, Cale, and up until now, the Chevys haven't been doing well this year. A carburetor change is supposed to affect all that. Do you think it will? Well, it hasn't uh, yet, Chris. Uh, not in qualifying anyway. You know, we, we came to Atlanta expecting to run uh, four to five miles an hour slower than we did here last time. And then uh, qualifying day, we came and practiced and qualified the same day, and uh, everybody ran faster, even set up a new record uh, here at Atlanta. So, you know, it, uh, we knew it wasn't going to close the gap between the Chevrolet and the, the uh, Chrysler and Ford uh, cars on the super speedways, but we, uh, we figured it might slow them down a little bit and us down a little bit too, but it hadn't done, uh, done either one of these. You know, I think the, the big mistake that uh, anybody does, uh, NASCAR did this, of course, they were trying to help. We were all in favor of it, but I think the big problem and the biggest big mistake is telling uh, the racing crews such as Junior Johnson and uh, my people and uh, the uh, Wood Brothers and the Petty Crew and all these people six months in advance what they're going to do. And you give these people six months advance notice and uh, you're behind them. You're on ahead of them. So your broad shoulders have got a lot on them today, <laughs> Kale, with a car that's slower than the rest in the field. Can you make up for that by driving harder? Well, Chris, this is a, a chassis racetrack uh, after the race gets uh, going. And we feel like that this Holly Farm Chevrolet is uh, that Herb Nab has the chassis worked out to where after the race gets started that we'll be in pretty good shape. This is uh, this is what we're shooting for anyway. We're about about a mile and a half uh, slow in speed, but we hope to over make it up in uh, handling. What about the last hour? Well, the last hour, uh, everything gets tired the last hour here. This is a rough racetrack, and it really beats you down to a frazzle uh, 500 miles here. So the last hour is really... Uh, the time that, that everybody here dreads but of course if you come out uh winter if you end up in that uh, victor victor lane you you feel a whole lot better thank you so those were the words of kale yarbrough before this race got underway currently he's in third place and the best thing that could happen to him right now would be a short yellow because then he would be able to make up all that distance on the race course and unlap himself to the leaders. And then he really would be in a position to win this race, I believe a better position than anyone else, Bill, because he's as strong as an ox, that man. And that car, he said it himself, he, think, he thought he was going to make it up on the racetrack by handling. And there's no question, that car is the best handling motor car that I've seen on this racetrack, certainly this weekend. So on the lead right now, and in lap 309, with 19 laps to go, we have David Pearson. Pearson in car number 21, the Pure Later Mercury. And behind him is Benny Parsons in the Kings Row Chevrolet. Talk about uh, a great uh, a great season. Well, this was last year for David Pearson. And this year, David Pearson is second in the money winnings. He's won $65,475. And he has had three starts, two wins. And uh, that isn't bad as far as an average is concerned. The leading money winner, Richard Penny, dropped out of this race on the 196th lap, and he has won 73,000 this year. Now, Benny Parsons is currently in fourth place, and he has won 46,000. Incidentally, the winner here today will take home something like $15,000 out of a total purse of 151,000. So the way things stand right now, they are on the 310th lap, 18 laps to go. That's only a drive down to the corner grocery store, really, as far as these guys are concerned. We'll be back with the climax of the race in a moment. And now all eyes are on just two cars out on the race course with a thought about a third. There's one of them right there, 21. There's the second one, 72. 21 driven by David Pearson, 72 driven by Benny Parsons. The third car is a yellow car. It's number 11. It's driven by Cale Yarborough. And Cale is trying desperately now in the concluding 17 laps to try to unlap himself. As far as points are concerned, Benny Parsons is the man who is out in front so far this year on the Grand National Circuit. And as far as points are concerned in this race, they have a total, I believe, of, what is it, 175 to the winner. So it could be a, a very big day for Benny Parsons even finishing second, as a matter of fact, because he would still maintain the Grand National leadership. And of course, that means a lot 
in terms of money and prestige at the end of the year. All right, David Pearson has a three-second lead now on Benny Parsons. And we don't want to lose uh, sight of the fact that Cale Yarborough is out on that course just trying to burn it up here in the last uh, 14 laps. We're on 314 right now. Jackie, want to make a speculation about uh, Kale or any of the other observations you might have? Well, I would be willing to bet a few dollars, and that from a Scotsman, Bill, is a very big statement, that if there was a yellow flag right now, I would bet that Kale Yarborough would win this motor race. If he gets unlapped, and if he gets himself up there, he's in a position to win this motor race. If there's no yellow, well, I'd have to bet on David Pearson. There can be few men that have led more races close to the end than David Pearson, and he's not the sort of man you would expect to, to wobble on his nerves. But that man we're looking at right now, Cale Yarbrough, the yellow and white number 11 car, he's the sort of man that if we got a yellow, he could just put it together, he could drive on any part of this racetrack now with a car that's handling so well, he could do the job on everyone. But he, and I think he would be a tremendously popular winner to have come from the back as he's come to Nato. All right, we are on 315. We have 13 laps to go. Now they are on 316. We have 12 laps to go. The record for this race was set in 1970 by Bobby Allison at 139.5. But because today we had a total of 51 laps run under the caution, our speed has been cut down to 127.500 miles an hour at this point. There are the leaders, and then the second place car. Here are the top money winners that I spoke of a little bit earlier. Richard Petty out on top, but David Pearson in second, and certainly would surpass Richard Petty as the leading money winner with the victory here today, since Richard will finish far down in terms of dollars this afternoon, going out on the 196 lap with a mechanical problem. You know, I've said it before, but we're close to the end of a motor race here, Bill. There's so many unexpected things can happen in motorsport. You know, the situation we've had so many times, we've seen it with a man we've seen right now. We saw it at Daytona. We saw it last year at this race. Lenny Pond blew an engine only seven laps from the end, and we had a really close finish with Richard Petty just pipping uh, Buddy Baker with my only feet. Now, we could have a situation again just at the end of this race that would give Kale Yabra that chance he's looking for. So one can never be sure, and this is where I believe even motor racing, the nerves really come up to the height. Well, Jackie, a little bit earlier in our program, we watched you inside that race car, uh, Richard Petty, and I'll tell you one thing, you did 10 laps out there, and I, I looked at that tape many, many times and watched it, and I, and I noticed what a physical effort it was to hang on to that wheel. There must be a tremendous amount of vibration. Multiply that by, what, 50 times, and you, you get an idea with the traffic out there what it must be like physically. Oh, yes, yeah, a very tiring thing, of course, and there's an enormous amount of noise. Very few people consider that noise is important, but in one of those cars, it's a bit like being in a drum when somebody's hitting it. And, of course, that is tiring mentally as well. Even though these boys do wear earplugs and well-padded helmets, it is a noisy car, and it does get very tiring. Ten laps to go, and David Pearson is in the lead with Benny Parsons three seconds behind him and Gail Yarborough waiting to close if anything should happen to the leaders. We'll be back for the final laps in a moment. Bill Fleming, along with Jackie Stewart and Chris Economaki, they are on 321 with seven laps to go in this 320 lap grueling grind of this afternoon of 500 miles on a warm Atlanta afternoon. It is not as hot as it could be here in Atlanta as it sometimes gets in June and July, but it is a warm day and the track temperatures have been particularly high. Yeah, well, of course, they've been made high also by the rain we had overnight, as you mentioned earlier on. The racetrack is very clean, which means there's a lot of abrasion on the tires, a lot more grip than would normally be the case. With only seven laps to go, the leader, car number 21, David Pearson, the grandfather, the silver fox. Um, and there you see the relationship to the second position man, and there he is in your screen right now. That's Benny Parsons, car number 72, the winner of the 1975 Daytona 500. And he should right now be happy to finish in second place because he's not close enough to really make a run at David Pearson. The man we're all concerned about, if by any chance at all there was to be a yellow flag, then Hill Yarbrough... He's right in the middle of the backstretch. ...who's really going in right now to turn number three and going into turn number four, he's the man, he could, he could, the car you're looking at now at the top of your screen, he's going half a lap, half a second a lap, and Ooh. he nearly got loose there, he was very close and deep, my goodness. Five laps to go, and Cale Yarborough, right behind Lanny Pond there, got squeezed off, and it looked like he might be squeezed right into the wall. 
He's in third place. What he needs is a short yellow. He needs about a three-lap yellow. That's all he needs right now, and if he had that, there's my guess for the winner. <laughs> Hale Yarbrough, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, had some problems with the distributor, and he missed five very precious laps. He missed them at a crucial point in the race and uh, has been trying to battle back ever since he did. He's been running 153, 154 miles an hour. David Pearson now at 151 is two miles an hour slower, but he knows this. He is running just fast enough to stay ahead of uh, Benny Parsons, and he now has about four and a half seconds on Benny Parsons, so he's picked up a little bit on him, and we have four laps to go. There's Benny Parsons, who would pick up uh, around 10 grand or so for a second place finish, but that isn't as good as 15 for first, as well as the points, but Benny will pick up some uh, 170 points in the grand national total. And uh, might even pick up some bonus points on this one. They give them to the driver who leads the race, five additional points to the driver leading the most laps, and so forth. One of the cars that could help uh, here would be the fact that Donald Waltrip is still smoking very badly. If he smoked a great deal more, I think the officials would be concerned that he was dropping a bit of oil, and that would certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons. This is all speculation, and half of the people in this racetrack right now are speculating as to whether there's any way now that David Pearson could be passed. All right, the point is that they are on the 326th lap. When they come by here, they will have two laps to go. Incidentally, don't forget, stay tuned for Wide World of Sports. You'll enjoy immensely the Vienna Ice Review from Lausanne, Switzerland, and the 50th anniversary of the Golden Gloves Finals from Madison Square Garden, New York, as well as Dorothy Hamill's homecoming in Connecticut. And now David Pearson is on the starting to go into the backstretch out of turn two. Car number 21 and 72, Benny Parsons, the only man that can catch him reasonably right now, is about the length of the backstretch behind him. So you can see that David Pearson, as he comes by here and will get the white flag, has things pretty well under control. Here he comes by. Everybody's standing down in front of us. The white flag should be out, and it is, as David Pearson has 1.522 miles to go. Well, the vibration that he talked about earlier to his pick crew, I'm afraid that vibration hasn't shown up for any of these other well, competitors. You know what they call us? <laughs> they, they call it good vibes. Well, it must have been good for him. Obviously, he's taking his time. He's not getting himself into any trouble. He's allowing the car in front of him to take the lead, not to be pushed, to be sure that he's going to get in. He doesn't want any last corner accident on this motor course. All right, here he comes. The checker flag will be out for David Pearson. The checkered flag is out, everybody stands, and he has won his third race of the year. Two more than anybody else on the Grand National Circuit, and David Pearson, the winner of the 1976 Atlanta 500. He won here in 1973, the only other time he won it. In second place there, as you see, car number 72, that is Betty Parsons. A final quick word from you, Jackie. Well, I think it's just been a great race. A great race for the old grandfather, well calculated and well driven. And a, certainly a great race by Cale Yarborough, who finished third despite missing those five laps because of a mechanical problem. But all the accolades today go to 41-year-old David Pearson of Spartanburg, South Carolina. So all in all, it's been quite an afternoon here at the Atlanta 500. This is Bill Fleming along with Chris Economaki and Jackie Stewart saying so long. Travel arrangements made through at a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Now's the time to save with United's new Freedom Fair. Any day, almost anywhere, United's new Freedom Fair. Once again, the winner of, the day, of this race here today, the Atlanta 500, is David Pearson.